In this video, you will learn about the chest x-ray findings in a pneumothorax patient. So in pneumothorax, there is air entering the chest and pushing the lung away, leaving a visible lung edge. So when you are searching for a pneumothorax in a chest x-ray, start by looking over the lung fields, looking for that lung edge. So there is a left pneumothorax in this x-ray and this is the lung edge that you can see here. It goes like that. So basically the air is coming from outside and pushing the lung and leaving it like that. And this is the lung edge as you can see in a zoomed in picture. And there should be no vascular markings that pass beyond that lung edge. So as you can see in a normal lung, there is those vessels that uh, spread from the hilum towards the uh, lung lobes. Now in the pneumothorax lung, the vascular markings are reaching near the edge, but they are not extending beyond that. So this is the lung edge and the vascular markings are reaching this and they are not extending beyond that. So the area uh, beyond that is pretty black. It is more radiolucent because there is no lungs and there is no vascular markings there. And pneumothorax is best viewed in exploratory phase radiographs. So the x-rays that are taken during the expiration phase are better viewing pneumothorax because the lung is smaller in size, making it easier to see uh, the lung edge and the pneumothorax ultimately. Now in pneumothorax, we have different types. We have open pneumothorax, closed pneumothorax, and tension pneumothorax. In open and closed pneumothorax, you see the lung edge and you see that there is no vessels beyond the lung edge. So in addition to the lung edge and the loss of vascular markings, in tension pneumothorax, you will also see mediastinal shift, tracheal deviation, and depressed diaphragm. Now this is a frontal chest x-ray of a tension pneumothorax. And here you can see the lung edge. So this is the lung edge going down like that. And beyond that, you can see the vascular markings. So this is a pneumothorax. And you can also see that the trachea is deviated in this chest x-ray. So this is the trachea comes like that. And this is the spine. And you can see that the trachea is pretty deviated to the right. And you can also see that the heart is shifted. So there's mediastinal shift. Normally, one third of the heart is to the right and two thirds are to the left, like that. But in this picture, you can see that there is more than two thirds of the heart are to the right and less than one third is to the left. So the heart is, is a pretty shifted to the right side. And that is because in tension pneumothorax, the air entering the chest can't leave. So it is entering and it is pushing the organs away. So it is pushing all of those organs away, leading to mediastinal shift, tracheal shift, and also depressed diaphragm. So as you can see, this diaphragm is a pretty depressed, the left diaphragm. In comparison with the right, this is the right diaphragm, is a pretty elevated. So the air is also pushing the diaphragm down. Now tension pneumothorax is life-threatening. It might kill the patient. And all types of pneumothorax might convert to become the tension pneumothorax. That is why pneumothorax requires emergency treatment. Now this is another frontal chest x-ray and you can also see the lung edge here as you can see and the lung markings are not seen beyond the lung edge so this is an hemothorax and you can also see that there is fluid in the chest also 
So here we have a fluid also. So we have fluid and air at the same time. Now normally, if there is a fluid alone in the pleural space, we get a curved line, what we call the meniscus sign. But if we have an air and fluid at the same time in the pleural space, like this x-ray that we have, we get a perfect horizontal line. So the edge of the fluid will be a perfect horizontal line. So if we compare it to the meniscus sign, the meniscus sign is on the left. You can see that there is a curved line if we have a pleural effusion alone. But if we have an air and a fluid at the same time, which is on the right chest x-ray, we get a perfect line. So now whenever you see a perfect horizontal line on the edge of the fluid in the chest x-ray, look for the pneumothorax. And in this picture, you can see the lung edge right here. So this is the lung edge of the pneumothorax. So if you see a horizontal line, pleural effusion, look for the pneumothorax. Now in some situations, we cannot get the patient to stand to take the x-ray. So they will be supine when the x-ray is taken. So in supine chest x-ray, the air is not going to be in the lung apex. That is only in the erect chest x-ray. So in erect chest x-ray, the air will be above. That makes it easier to detect the lung edge. When the patient is supine, the air will be anterior and posterior in the pleural cavity, making it harder to detect the lung edge. But there is some tips that will help you because in supine patient, there will be hyperlucency in the lung basis, producing the deep sulcus sign and some other signs that help you diagnose a supine pneumothorax. So in supine patient, look for the deep sulcus sign, the transparent and sharp diaphragm because its air is sitting near the diaphragm making it transparent and you look for double diaphragm sign. So this is a frontal chest x-ray of a supine patient having a pneumothorax. And on the left side of the x-ray, you can see that the sulcus is pretty deep. That's what we call the deep sulcus sign. That is because the air is collecting over here, making the costophrenic sulcus pretty deep. And you can also see that the diaphragm is pretty sharp and transparent. And you also see the double diaphragm sign. That is because we have this diaphragm here and we also have this diaphragm. So that is what we call the double diaphragm sign. Now, if we compare the supine pneumothorax frontal chest x-ray with a normal chest x-ray. So this is supine pneumothorax and this is normal. Now you can see that in the normal chest x-ray, the sulcus is pretty narrow. The costophrenic sulcus is pretty narrow on both sides, while in the pneumothorax x-ray, you can see that the left costophrenic sulcus is pretty deep. That's what we call the deep sulcus sign. And on the pneumothorax x-ray, you can see that the diaphragm is sharp and transparent. In comparison with the normal x-ray, the diaphragm is blurry. And on the pneumothorax x-ray, you can see the double diaphragm sign. So this is a diaphragm. This is another diaphragm. While in the normal x-ray, there is only one diaphragm. Finally, I want to draw your attention to a differential diagnosis of a pneumothorax. It's the skin faults. The skin faults can trick you into thinking of pneumothorax because it looks like a lung edge. So this is a skin fold you can see here. This is another skin fold that you can see right here too. So those skin faults can trick you into thinking of pneumothorax, but they are actually not. And to exclude 
the pneumothorax, you look for the lung blood vessels or the lung markings. They run beyond the skin fold. So as you can see here with this, with this skin fold, you can see that the blood vessels are running beyond it. And also the lung edge would be a thin line. In comparison with the skin fold, it doesn't show as a thin line, but it would show as a thick line. So as you can see here, this skin fold, the line is quite thick. So if we compare it to the pneumothorax, here you can see the lung edge is a pretty thin line. But here, the skin fold is a pretty thick line. And also in pneumothorax, you can't see the lung markings beyond the lung edge. So beyond the lung edge, the area is a pretty black here and here. While beyond the skin fold, there is actually some lung markings on both sides here. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Now, if you care, this video is a part of bigger class. It's called the chest X-ray masterclass. It will show on your monitor right now. You can check it out if you want.